Opposition to greatly broadening private health care coverage even before it fully kicks in, and with many new insurance premiums actually coming up lower than expected, represents some serious concerns over startup delays and unintended consequences, as well as conservative opposition to almost anything Obama. But underlying those conflicting perspectives and the larger partisan paralysis affecting Congress these days are human psychology and genetics. So argues the new book Predisposed, Liberals, Conservatives, and the Biology of Political Differences from Rutledge Publishers. And to explain for your ears only, we're joined by one of its three academic authors, Kevin Smith, professor of political science at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Welcome to the program. Uh, Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Talk about the kind of research that shows political proclivities have roots that go deeper than what we usually think of family tradition, personal experience, reasoned reaction to external circumstances like the economy, crime, immigration, and cultural changes. Well, one of the things that we're pretty certain is that political attitudes and behaviors have a genetic basis, and we know this from a variety of different um, studies. Um, These are mostly heritability studies. They look at things like um, differences between twins, um, people who are raised in families other than their biological family, um, extended family studies. And the bottom line in all these studies is that the closer your genetic relationship, the closer you are on a number of things, you know, the obvious biological characteristics, the color of your eyes, the color of your hair, and so forth, but also on a set of personality traits and also on political attitudes and behaviors. And for people like us, this raises a bit of a mystery is because we're reasonably certain you do not have a stretch of your DNA that is, can be thought of as a liberal gene or a conservative gene. So kind of what's going on, and basically what we're arguing in this book is that while genes might not build a liberal or a conservative, they certainly build the biological infrastructure of our sensory systems, of our cognitive systems. And one of the things that we're finding is that conservatives and liberals differ in their sensory systems and their cognitive systems. Well, talk about how deep predispositions affect the way we actually experience the world, tastes we like or dislike, conditions that make us uncomfortable, things we fear. Well, the bottom line there is is we experience the world differently. I mean, a, a simple example would be that our taste receptors uh, um, are genetically determined. Based upon our genetic package, some of us think um, uh, arugula tastes great. Some of us think it tastes like lettuce drenched in gasoline. And that uh, gives us a taste, a, a preference, a predisposition for or against that um, particular uh, vegetable. And you, you can sort of like look at these sorts of biologically anchored predispositions all the way through things like tastes in movies and novels and stories and humor. And how does that relate to a person's position on the political spectrum, what they fear, what they like, what they, the moods they favor? Well, one of the things that we're finding is that these sorts of differences, such as whether you like arugula or not, actually correlate with your political tendencies. And what we think it is, is is part of an entire psychological and biological package that affects how you view the world, um, how you literally see it, taste it, experience it. And people who see, taste, and experience the world in different ways tend to have different attitudes on a lot of different things, everything from tasting cars to tasting colors. Um, But one of those systematic differences seems to be political preferences, literally a taste in politics. What do these underlying dispositions mean to the kind of compromise we generally see as essential to a working democracy and which seems in such short supply today? The short answer to that, what we, the big implication of our research is, is kind of the obvious. Compromise is hard, not just today, but in any time period. One of the things that we were um, uh, going through uh, in the last chapter of the book as we were writing it, I kept thinking in the back of my head is, is you know, the implications of our research really sound familiar to me. Um, you know, when we sort of like talk a little bit prescriptively about uh, uh, what all this research uh, means for the the political world today. And in effect, basically what we're doing is putting in 21st century language what James Madison argued in Federalist number tw- number 10 over 200 years ago. 
The conservative opposition to Obamacare seems to acknowledge that predispositions can be counterbalanced by experience, uh, admitting recently, at least in one case, that expanded health care coverage must be stopped now before Americans come to appreciate and depend on it. What's your reaction to that analysis? Oh, I wouldn't necessarily disagree um, with it. I mean, one of the things that we thought really carefully about was the title of our book, and there's a reason it's titled Predisposed and Not Predetermined. I mean, these deep psychological and biological patterns and characteristics that we're talking about, I mean, you can think about those as defaults. But just because we feel something, we prefer something deep in our gut, doesn't mean that we can't reason our way out of it. Um, you know, being predisposed does not mean that we un- are unpersuadable. It means that it's, it's difficult to do so. Well, polls suggest that dislike of a government shutdown is greater uh, than fear of or dislike of Obamacare, which people still are more mystified by than, than terrified by. Uh, who do you think gets the blame if a shutdown results? Well, I mean, this is uh, less to do with our book and just sort of like reading the tea leaves um, uh, from public opinion polls and so forth. But I, I think it's clearly the Republicans and especially the Republicans in the House that will get more of the blame for a shutdown than, than, than the president. Kevin Smith is a professor of political science at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and a co-author of Predisposed, Liberals, Conservatives, and the Biology of Political Differences from Rutledge Publishers.